We actually were roommates when we first opened the business. I don't think either of us would recommend that you start a business with the person you're living with because there's no f escaping <laughs> each other. It's really terrible. Being a whole animal butcher shop, we end up with a lot of bones. About 40 to 45% of every animal is bone. People buy chicken bones, people buy beef bones, but they don't really buy pork bones, which sucks because that means we gotta throw them away and we wanna be a zero waste humanly possible. So the chef from one of our favorite ramen places, Suzume in Williamsburg, came in, said, what are you doing with your bones? I want to buy them all. So we're finally going to go check out the process, see what he does. Let's go to Suzume. Hello. So Josh, we're here with you. We're here with Nelson. You guys run this place. We're a whole animal butcher shop. Right. So we have a ton of pork bones every week. It makes perfect sense to partner with somebody that makes ramen, make really fantastic ramen. By you guys holding your pork bones with that dry aged beef, uh, you're able to get like a lot of that funk and kind of like blue cheesiness that you would get out of dry aged beef, but with pork. And it's kind of interesting, I've never heard anybody talk about actually wanting some like dry aged funk like that kind of bacteria rich environment to oh, yeah. actually like become a part of the final product you're, you're serving. Especially if a ramen shop is usually very clean bones, but you're actually looking for a more complex flavor profile. Yeah, so even like in normal stock making, you know, you'd usually blanch bones or, or roast them off or whatever to kind of draw out some of those impurities, but like, I want all that, all that slime. <laughs> slime might not be the most appealing word, but like that slime that forms from that blue cheesiness and it gets stuck in the fat, I want all that. Looking at the raw products, it's kind of crazy. Like you have the knuckle of the femur with a little bit of meat still attached to it. You then have like marrow that you're also gonna marry like into this, into this broth. I mean, you even have a tail similar to the foot, has more bones, has more collagen. You really are getting the whole pig. Yeah, totally. Just through the bone. What better application is there? Yeah. yeah, there really yeah, is there a really one. Is. Yeah. This is the yao broth that's like cooled down. This is one that we made yesterday. Uh, you can Whoa. see kind of like how gelatinous it is. And yeah. a lot of that's coming from the pig Pure skin. collagen. Yeah, yeah. so you, you take water and this and create that. Right. Can we eat some of that? Absolutely. I don't think I've ever had anything Colton quite like this before. Katsu broth? No. Yeah. Certainly cold, have not. cold pork jelly. Yeah. Oh man. Wow. That really has like an amazing texture. It just like melts right away. You know when you make a turkey sandwich the day after Thanksgiving and there's like, <laughs> there's all the, and there's, yeah, and there's there's like leftover that. gravy? Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna throw in the pork bones and the, the pig's feet first. And we'll get those going. So you're you're not searing them, which a lot of stocks call for. Our ramen broth is white. We're not roasting the bones. I'm not gonna blanch either, but I want all that funk that we get from your dry aging room in the pot. Four trotters split in half. So we're literally getting that full pig effect. All we gotta do is top this off with water and get this going. You don't want excess water. You just want just enough to cover. So we want it to be as concentrated as possible. So at this point, we're just gonna blast the heat. The aromatics kit is just gonna be these onions, which we're gonna brulee ginger, carrots, bay leaf, coriander, and black pepper. There's nothing crazy here and there's nothing that's gonna overpower the pork. So as these like bubbles start to come to the surface, you kind of see some of the proteins starting to come up as well. Okay. Some of that's blood and some of that's just like bone muck. For the next like 30, 45 minutes, someone's basically sitting here skimming this the entire time. Sounds super fun. I'll deal with this job. Over here we got one that's been going for about an hour and a half, two hours. It's already kind of been skimmed of a lot of the impurities. This is gonna roll for like six, seven hours. We're gonna throw in the dry aromatics and the herbs. The other aromatics have already gone in. We're good on adding these carrots, uh, the onions, and this bacon for the last hour. We're nearing the end where we're gonna drop and cool the stock. You guys, can I stop now? No. <laughs> There's so much muck, Josh. <laughs> this goes for about eight hours in total. So you got a deck of cards or something? <laughs> yeah, well, I was gonna make some lamb lamb stuff for you in the meantime. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Hold yeah. you over. So this is awesome. I've never had a lamb neck bow before. The neck is another perfect cut yeah. to braise that people really don't know what to do with. Those muscles that get used the most are the ones that are gonna have a lot of flavor. You rarely see it in a butcher shop, much less like, I don't think I ever see it on a menu anywhere, ever. I and mean, it's got all that great collagen like we get out of the pig's feet. We'll just finish this Lovage yogurt. What's up with yogurt going on a bow? It's not something I think I've seen before. So the yogurt obviously works well with lamb. The Lovage kind of is in place of like 
the herbal herbaceousness that you would want with like something heavy and gamey like lamb. And then the butternut just kind of adds sweetness. I don't, I don't think about a bow as a bow. It's more of a vehicle for whatever we want to do. The most fun part of this is to look at everybody on the crew and just like be like, oh my God, it's the thing I've ever had in my entire <laughs> life. Oh my God, that's good. God damn. Obviously with the neck and that dense muscle, it's not gamey. It's just like really, really meaty, like a really, really great, like clear lamb flavor. What's crazy though is how for a lamb neck that's brushed with a beef fat, how light it is. I feel like I could eat 10 more of these. So where are you from originally? I'm from Florida. Yeah? What yeah. part of Florida? Tampa. So, okay, so I feel like <laughs> obvious questions. How does a white kid from Florida end up being the chef making all the ramen? I ask myself that question every day. Um, is it just something you fell in love with, like the dish itself? So the first job I ever had was at uh, a Roy's Hawaiian Fusion. So it was like pan, oh, yes. pan Asian kind of stuff, and I was doing sushi there. Yeah. So that was kind of the lineage that brought me here, being that this place is kind of like Hawaiian mall food is the theme, and then we have a sushi bar. So, so I was kind of uniquely qualified for that. Other than that, this place just offers a lot of freedom. like. As, as Hawaiian as it is, as much of a ramen place and a sushi place as it is, we're able to do all kinds of Okay, so that makes like, sense, because like the first time I came here, I came here with my wife and we sat down at the bar and we were like, great, we're gonna get some ramen. And then we were like, fish tacos are on the menu? Like, okay, yes, we're getting fish tacos. This is gonna be fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm kind of lucky where like I work for an owner that actually like just wants to make good food. So at the end of the day, like as long as you're making good food, it doesn't really matter. So if I'm doing a duck cassoulet, which we're running this week, like I can just do a duck cassoulet and it doesn't have to really be anything. We're towards the end of the process now. I have some soup ready so we can eat it. So the last thing I'm gonna do before we do that is just puff off some chicharron uh, that we make here to top the soup. Kind of reinforces all the porkiness. Basically this pork skin is just boiled for a long time and then we scrape the excess fat off of it and then we dehydrate it overnight. We smoke this pork belly for like four hours, then we cook it in a bath at 74 degrees overnight, and then we'll grill it over this charcoal to again like reinforce that smokiness. So how long about does it take for you from the time you get an order in for a bowl of ramen to be hitting the window to go, go out to the customer? Uh, ideally like a minute and a half. Minute and a half. It takes, I mean, it only takes 50 seconds for the noodles to cook and then everything else is like pre-done pretty much, so. So eight. Eight hours of prep into a one minute pickup. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, that's the goal. This is a braised pork shoulder that uh, we braise in like a mother braise, so we continually reuse the same braise as bok choy that's just sauteed with some sake. And then we're just gonna throw this pork belly in there, and then these gargantuan chicharron. And there you have it. Oh my god. Aww. It's a oh shit load of meat. That is a lot of meat. So that's, gorgeous. That's why you sell a lot more in winter than you do in the summer. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that looks fantastic. I don't know which part to attack first. So I kind of like to just shove everything in. Get it in there? Yeah, and then you can hear the chicharrones starting to like crackle and pop. Oh my God. You get like that smokiness from the trotters. And there is like a thickness. Like it's not like coating my mouth with all that gelatin, but you do get that like thickness in the broth. To me, what makes this different and exceptional is that, you know, typical ramen is kind of more about the accoutrement, the other stuff that you're putting into it. What stands out to me is just how round and full that broth is. I could drink this every single day. You know, we've been had our business for almost 10 years now. It's very rare to find like a new appreciation for something that we're looking at all day, every day. We're looking at just like pig's feet and just like, what the f are we gonna do with these things again? And now we're like, I have a much better understanding and also, yeah, a lot more respect for like everything you can get out of that. These things that most people just don't even wanna look at and you're doing something like really, really, really cool with it. I actually have one more thing before we go. I like to bake pies. Aww. <laughs> we go. You guys will especially like this pie because your leaf lard is the main factor in the crust. Yes. Awesome. There's more meat. <laughs> Good thing Brent's got such a sweet tooth. He's gonna go buck wild. Oh, oh yeah. Oh man. Just like shovel method. <laughs> That's a legit really good pie. Delicious. Man. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow.